whenever a company is building out infrastructure and you have data that needs to move around, you don't want the bottleneck of performance to come from your databases. You're going to need a caching layer on top of that to allow things to move quickly, to make your apps performant, to make sure you're getting data to the right places at the right time. And it's uh, people can't forget the cache. Don't forget the cache. You're listening to Data Revolution. The show about data, innovation, and economics in the rapidly changing cloud world. Hi, Jenki. Hi. Interesting topic today. I believe when performance matter, caching is key. I heard that you sat down with Joseph and John from Ivan. Can you tell us more? Yes, I sat down with Joseph. He's the director of our open source program office. It's always a mouthful. He has such a long title. Yep. <laughs> and John, our head of databases. And we talked about the Redis license change, why it's important to think about caching, and also dove into their launch of Dragonfly. Whoa, yes, I heard that the License change was something really important for the community and also heard something about Valky. Yes, yeah. So we dove into what Ivan is doing with the Valky project. So I'm really excited for people to listen to this episode. Well, I can't wait. Let's check it out. Hey, John and Joseph, how are you? Fine, and you? Very good, thank you. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Sometimes I never get asked, so thank you so much. <laughs> I'm, I'm a polite person, pro probably, I don't know. I want to thank both of you for sitting down with me. We're going to be talking about caching, Redis, Dragonfly. I'm going to start with an easy question. I would like one word answers. So what's the first thing that comes to mind when you hear the word caching? Invalidate. Mm -mm. Performance. So why? Why did those come to mind? I work with caches in many companies almost I, th I would say in every company i've worked with, with i i use caches and that's one of the most complicated problems in it in, in the software industry is caching and invalidating the cache it's always one of the biggest problems so when do you know that the data that you have in your cache is no longer valid so when you know that that will be valid and useful and you keep that data or when you need to stop and forget that data and uh, retrieve new versions of it or newer data that to occupy that cache. And as I said, that's one of the most complicated problems in, in computer science. It's caching and invalidating the cache is part of it. That's what came to my mind. <laughs> and what about you, John? Why performance? Uh, less, less maybe technical than time to live <laughs> and managing that, which is definitely a massive problem. For me, I'm, my database is are my focus and my love, or maybe not my love, um, but whenever a company is building out infrastructure and you have data that needs to move around, you don't want the bottleneck of performance to come from your databases. You're going to need a caching layer on top of that to allow things to move quickly, to make your apps performant, to make sure you're getting data to the right places at the right time. And it's uh, people can't forget the cache. Don't forget the cache. Um, so yeah, if you want performance, don't forget the cache. I often say that caching is like the plumbing and not everyone, like when you buy a house, you're looking at everything, but you do need to get the sewage or plumbing system inspected and it can be forgotten about too. So a question I want to ask you is why is it bad when you wait too late or if you're too late to add a cache? If you don't think about it at the initial design of the infrastructure, what tends to happen is your workload works quite well, you're pretty happy with it, all of a sudden users start complaining, things are running slowly, my app's not responsive, um, and your first lever is actually, at that point, because it's in production, uh, is to pull a scale. So you upscale your uh, database, the CPU, the memory, the RAM, that's going to cost you money. It's often way more efficient to put a, have a caching layer in that you can scale up the, to deliver the majority of the performance. Your workloads aren't going to change that rapidly, but if you haven't got a caching layer to, to deliver that performance for you, you're going to result, you're going to end up um, upsizing the database and costing yourself more money. Yeah, and it can cost a lot of money. Oh my God, yeah. <laughs> so much money. It can be very expensive <laughs> if you do it wrong. So <laughs> obviously, I'm going to ask about Redis and the license change. So, Joseph, you're the head of the open source office at Ivan. I would love to get your take on Redis and the license change. That's a question I was never asked. Thank you for asking <laughs> me this question. Uh, so basically what happened recently is that Redis changed its license and now it's not anymore an open source approved license. So luckily we have a body in the internet from the open source world that is called the Open Source Initiative where 
they define and they try to keep up to date with all the licenses that they are open source, that they really truly guarantee the rights of the people and the freedom of the people using the libraries and every software that is in, under the open source licenses. So what happened recently is that Redis changed from one approved license to a non-approved license. These non-approved license, what it means is that for some set of users, they are not allowed to use Redis anymore. In the industry, that means that probably many companies are now looking for an alternative to Redis because they are not allowed to use these anymore unless they use the services or they acquire a, li a license from Redis. And that's a big change. It happened uh, quite uh, suddenly, so to say. We could see maybe some signs, but uh, I want to say as well that it's okay. Companies can decide to change the license from a software. It's legal. It's nothing wrong. It's nothing that they did something completely illegal that, that we should shame them. But it's something that it always creates disruption in the communities. And what we need to do is be all uh, looking at these projects that they are probably single vendor sometimes or projects that they are struggling financially to make sure that their license stays in an open license and, and it doesn't change to a proprietary one. And yeah, that's one of the things that happened recently <laughs> with Redis and something that we will probably talk afterwards, which is reactions to those license changes. Thanks so much for diving into that. It definitely was a shakeup for the community. I saw it on my social media. <laughs> a lot of people were talking about it. What does this mean for Ivan? Yeah, that's a great question. We offered uh, the open core uh, Redis offering as Ivan for Redis. Um, had a great adoption. We were able to support a lot of customers using it. It's a great technology. Um, along with the license change came a trademark change. So we are now offering Ivan uh, for caching. Uh, same product under the hood uh, until we're uh, until the license change um, kicks in in um, August 2025. But we're evaluating and working with a wider, broader community to accelerate the adoption of Valky. So it's a very, it's a fork of Redis. We're really proud of the amount of people who are behind it. Um, we're going to be deploying and uh, putting resources to get that into our platform as soon as possible. And the great thing about a fully open um, and innovative community is that we're going to see more features arriving in that product at a higher cadence than maybe we would have done with the open core um, previous uh, Redis offering. So I'm really excited about it. There's a lot, obviously it was a lot of work for us. We weren't expecting to do that work, um, but yeah, it's gonna be great for the for our customers and the, and the open source community, so yeah. And Joseph, what about you? What are your thoughts? So yeah, basically before I said, for a subset of users, they would not be allowed to use Redis anymore. So we are the subset of users, for example. So everyone who is competing business with Redis obviously is not allowed to use Redis. So that's why we needed to look for alternatives. And as John mentioned, there is the Valky alternative that it's under the umbrella of the Linux Foundation. And that was happening as fast as the news <laughs> happened. So uh, a lot of uh, hy hyperscalers and other companies among ours um, we came together to try to push forward this alternative, which is the fork. And basically that means that we took the same code, the la latest version that is still open source, and we will continue developing independently from the original project and moving forward with whatever the community needs it to go. Maybe this is a hard question, but how do we know what happened with Redis won't happen with Valky? Yeah, that's that's a key question. And, and it happened once, why not a second time or even a third time? So in this particular case, the project is under a software foundation. What that means is that there is no single vendor-led leader that drives innovation and development for this project. In this particular case, the Linux Foundation is the one who owns the copyright and the trademarks, for example. We were mentioning before, we have now a change of trademarks, so we need to use Ivan for cash or caching. But now, basically, Linux Foundation is the one owning the trademark Valky. It's the one owning the code base. That means that we have the guarantees from the Linux Foundation that this project will exist and will continue to exist. But obviously, Linux Foundation is just a foundation. Behind that, there is hyperscalers and big companies backing it up. And that means that we will have, most probably, lots of people supporting it, driving it, and innovating on Valky. Thanks so much for diving into that. I know that's probably on a lot of people's mind, like what's going to happen next, right? So thank you. I want to ask about the recent launch Ivan had. So you also have Ivan for Dragonfly along with Ivan for caching. 
really proud of the collaboration we've done with the Dragonfly team. It's an exciting technology. Uh, what it delivers for our customers is high scale, high throughput um, Redis, enterprise grade, um, high workload Redis. And the reason we'd Redis compatible service, and the reason we did Ivan for Dragonfly was Ivan for Redis was based on the Open Core product. Open Core is a, a type of licensing where um, you give away uh, the open source part of the product is limited by design in terms of either capabilities or feature sets. Um, which allows everyone to get started, but then essentially if you want all the, the bells and whistles or the enterprise grade um, throughput, you need to pay for a license. And so we found that our customers were limited by that capability previously um, when we were running Ivan for Redis. And in bringing Dragonfly to the portfolio, we've unlocked um, a massive amount of um, opportunity for our customers to have a high scale uh, caching layer enterprise grade, high throughput, but without any of the ties to the uh, Redis licensing. So. We're really proud to work with Dragonfly team. They're, they're, they're brilliant engineers. Um, the innovation there is uh, critical and our, our customers are seeing great outcomes. So how did that partnership work? I feel like it's really important to call out when organizations work together in partnership to put out great products. Yeah, 100%. And we um, this is our first time doing it, Ivan. So yeah. <laughs> it was a bit of a journey. Um, usually we, we, we build our own stuff. We make sure that we, we're, um, we can own it. But... Um, this was our first uh, inter-technology collaboration, uh, and it's gone brilliantly. Um, the, the way the engineers were able to interact and collaborate, our experience and hosting and um, making sure databases are resilient and uptight has actually helped Dragonfly team before launch. We got so much user input that we were able to uh, iron out three or four bugs before we went to production. So if I was to say at the highest level, it's gone brilliantly. Uh, and the team have adapted and working in a new way has been uh, really smooth for them, really. So what are the benefits customers are seeing implementing in their solutions? I'm interested actually in both because you have the open source backed service and then you have Ivan for Dragonfly now. Yeah, and I think we offer the best of both worlds at this point. Uh, and I'm really excited about the Valkyrie project. It, the rate that that will be able to evolve is going to be way faster than the open core Redis project. So um, that will evolve really quickly. But those who need, and it will take a while to get to, as normal development does to get to features out. But with the Dragonfly team, we're just able to accelerate and get very specific things that our customers need, our customers need, their customers need, uh, as opposed to a maybe slightly longer process uh, that may come from other uh, open source projects. So one of the other advantages uh, of Dragonfly is that um, it's API compatible uh, with Redis. So customers don't have to, if they're migrating away from a licensed version, on-prem or in another cloud, um, it's a really smooth transition. Caching is quite, as a technology, is quite easy actually to migrate. So people are finding that not only is it easy to migrate their data, but actually any of the applications they're developing or had developed against another technology uh, are directly compatible with Dragonfly and adoption has been super smooth. Thanks so much for diving into that. It was really interesting. I'm going to give you a really hard question now. I hope you're ready for it. Oh yeah, as ready as <laughs> I'm ever going to be. I would like to hear from both of you. What are your hopes for the future of caching? So my hopes is that, for example, Balki project uh, takes off and it's a successful project and it basically becomes a standard in the terms of caching. And yeah, that's my, my hope for the future. Yeah, I'd echo that. I think I'm really excited about that project evolving in a really rapid pace, given the number of people who are involved in it. But it, from my even perspective in the platform, I'm really hoping that we can get better at just making sure that customers' workloads are optimized with caching more natively without them having to fire up a single service or like we'll just accelerate their um, applications for them. So for me, it's more of an integration, making sure that caching is kind of invisible, but always there to, to make sure they've got the performance workloads they need. And what's yours? <laughs> I hope people find it exciting <laughs> and don't just think of it like plumbing like the plumbing of your house <laughs> but thank you so much for sitting down with me and i hope you have a great rest of your days thank you very much thank you very much pleasure. Yeah. caching caching and caching <laughs> a very interesting discussion about all the possible options that you have nowadays jenki what was your one or two or three or four or five <laughs> until you invalidated the cache favorite topics I really enjoyed when Joseph dove into the Valky fork and how that is with the Linux Foundation. So people can rest easy or have more peace of mind that what happened with Redis won't happen again. And I feel my second favorite part was the partnership of Ivan with Dragonfly because caching is 
very complicated if you don't do it at the right time, it, or it can be very complicated and it can really hurt a business. So having two different solutions on one platform, it felt very customer obsessed, but also being able to cater to whatever an organization may need. Yeah, that's in the interesting point for me is from a technological point of view, the fact that the API is always the same. Mm -hmm. It speaks about the success of the project. It speaks about how ubiquitous is this kind of API in the caching layer. People can transition from one solution to another seamless. So they don't have to change any code in the application. They need just to change the endpoint and the caching solution will just work. At the end of the day, caching, you need to be planning, you need to be figuring out what you need to build and being able to seamlessly do it without taking too much time is really important. And the last bit, it allows you to experiment much faster. If you don't need to change anything, you just swap an endpoint. Well, you can test solutions, you can test the advancement of the Valky project, you can test Dragonfly with just one change. And yeah. that's incredible. I mean, it's all about innovation at the end of the day, so. Yeah, well, Jenki, thanks for sitting now with me. Thanks for sitting and speaking about caching and invalidation and all the performance problem that the caching can solve with Joseph and John. I hope people will enjoy the episode. Thank you. Yeah, thank you.